Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, we love the WHO. Uh, you remember I said last week that in Nature they reported that the, they got an, a memo that the WHO is secretly kind of backing away from the origin of the virus question because lack of cooperation with China, but they, 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 they got, took a lot of hits with that. So the spokesperson for the WHO has said that they've called the scientific advisory group on the origins of novel pathogens to continue their investigation. As I said last week, at this point, who cares? I mean, honestly, if, uh, if it's a lab leak, we all agree there should be more lab security. If it came out of uh, natural spillover, we all agree there has to be a lot more surveillance and better public health and vaccines, et cetera. So it's about time we started doing stuff instead of trying to figure out who's guilty of what three years ago. Anyway, lots of news. Things are looking good. Uh, Most of the national numbers are going down for hospitalization and cases, mostly due to the fact that in Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York, those have gone down pretty dramatically. The problem is with seniors, particularly over the age of 65, you know, they're susceptible. I've shown you before, they're the ones that are still getting hospitalized. And of course, as everyone has decided the pandemic is over, except for the virus, uh, people are all, you know, doing, taking no precautions. And so that group of over the age of 65 continues to be uh, at risk. So we need to be thoughtful of that. Uh, New York City's mayor, Eric Adams, has decided they will stop Uh, The mandate for uh, municipal workers, that was a very contentious mandate, and uh, he's running for (laughs) re-election, so I think he's going to stop that. And and interestingly enough, the FDA is no longer suggesting that as a booster, you get the monovalent. So the booster that's recommended now, of course, is the bivalent, although now that the Novavax uh, vaccine has appeared, which is that uh, nanoparticle one that we've talked about, that. They've, they've said that you can get the Novavax monovalent as a booster. So that's the, only, uh, that's the only real difference in their recommendations. And of course, for people who have not been vaccinated, they still recommend it, uh, getting the original vaccine. So, and I keep telling everyone, please just get vaccinated or boosted. Make sure you're up to date on your boosters. Got a lot of questions the last couple of weeks on when, when should I get my next booster. Uh, we'll, we'll answer that later, but basically just start thinking about the fall season. If you've got, if you're up to date, think about the fall as getting your flu and your other vaccines. Uh, as I said, the pandemic is still going on. These are the cases. Uh, worldwide blue means there's over 5,000 uh, cases per over the pe- per day over the last seven days, but there have been major changes. So, Canada has increased the number of cases. Uh, uh, Brazil has increased the number of cases, but Australia is down. Europe has increased the number of cases. So. People are going to Spain and Portugal, like uh, one of my friends whose kid's getting married is going to Spain and Portugal. They're pretty hot right now. Uh, And China is now beginning to light up, as we all knew it would. This is the map for cases per 100,000 in the United States. And it's sort of settling into spotty places all over the country. So, you know, it's less in the Northeast in those uh, states I mentioned. But in Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, you know, there's, there, there's still a, a lot of cases around. Uh, the good news is that hospitalizations continue to decrease. But look how high this, you know, the 70-year-olds were, this by age group. They're falling. But remember, they're still a pretty significant risk. So if you're over the age of 65 or 70, even if you've been vaccinated, you're still susceptible for getting the disease. And they're the people who are going to have problems. So... Use common sense when you're getting together with elderly parents or grandparents. Uh, make sure that people are COVID negative before you visit them. Um, mortality has begun to, I've said this before, beginning to trickle down at long last, but still uh, 2,290 2, cases of uh, people died per week. That's 120,000 per year. That's lower compared to what it was, but that's still three times more than you would expect with the average flu season. So still a lot of virus out there and (laughs) pandemic's not over. It's just sort of dwindling down into sort of the endemic state. Uh, And the benefits of vaccination remain. Uh, I got a couple of questions about this, which I'll answer offline or answer later. But the main thing is there's still a tenfold benefit vaccinated versus unvaccinated uh, for if you've been vaccinated and boosted versus unvaccinated in terms of mortality. So 
huge benefit to vaccination and boost, so <laughs> please just... Just do it. Um, good news on the national scale for uh, the uh, microbiome and what's going on in wastewater. Finally, it's beginning to taper down. But again, blue represents uh, sites that are reporting downward trend, red upward trend. And the red upward trend finally has begun to plateau. But it's still about 10 or 15 percent of the sites that are sampling wastewater are, are reporting increases. That's what accounts for that spotty map for cases in the United States. In those areas, uh, wastewater is going up. And the dominant strain is X XBB 1.5. It's been the dominant strain for the last several months, uh, with accounting for almost 90% of all the viral uh, isolates. It really hasn't mutated beyond that. We don't see one emerging yet that's different, and it's now the dominant strain all the way, including in the northwest uh, Seattle region. This is a, a risk map that the CDC publishes for community transmission. And green is good, it means we're low. Harris County remains low at under uh, at five, at 59 cases per 100,000, so under 100 cases, and under uh, only eight cases admitted to the hospital per 100,000. Uh, anything below 20 is uh, considered low by the uh, CDC. Our, our friends at Dimmick County, they're back up to moderate, but you know, the thing is the population's so small, if two people get admitted to the hospital, it goes up on a per 100,000 basis. So they're still, I think, pretty low risk community. Uh, good news in the medical center, we continue to trickle down. We're now almost down to 5.9%. We haven't been under 6% for cases admitted to the hospital being positive. So that's a very good sign, but hospitalizations have plateaued. So there's still a number of people, <laughs> 107 per day, you know, when people go, oh, it's all over. We're admitting 107 people per day in the medical center, specifically for COVID. So, okay. Wastewater is in the city of Houston is plateaued finally, but at a very high level. So, you know, if you look back where we were uh, almost, uh, you know, in, in early 2022, we're, you know, three, four times higher than that. And so we, we still have a lot of virus in this community. It's plateaued, but it's still high. So, you know, people, as I said before, a lot of the kids who, are, who were not vaccinated, there's a lot of churning of, of, of virus in that age group. I, I know a lot of parents whose kids have tested positive for COVID. Well, you know, it's March, and it's time for March Madness for all you basketball fans out there. But, you know, scientists will never be out, outdone by a bunch of basketball players. So. There is this thing called stat madness, and it's a competition. And what it is is a bracket uh, style competition, uh, just like the NCAA tournament, where uh, you get to vote on what's the most interesting and exciting uh, scientific publication uh, last year. And so 64 were selected, and I'm happy to say uh, that two of them were from Baylor College of Medicine. Voting continues, it's a single elimination, just like the March Madness tournament. Uh, and uh, it's basically the, you're supposed to look at what's the top innovative science that in the previous year. And it looks just like this. There's a bracket. Looks like just like the March Madness bracket, only it's, it's got our logo. It's Baylor College of Medicine versus another one. And so we started off with two in, this, in the top uh, 64. Uh, and one that should have won but didn't. <laughs> I, just, I don't know how this didn't win. Uh, was a project from, was published in the Journal of Gerontology by, uh, by some of our investigators, uh, Dr. Sekhar and Kumar and their colleagues. They did the first randomized trial of supplementing uh, glycine and N-acetylcysteine, which has been shown to reduce oxidative stress. And this was looking as randomized controlled trials, so like placebo versus supplementing with these two things uh, in elderly people. And they found improvements in uh, uh, better muscle strength, gait speed, exercise capacity, and blood pressure. In other words, slowing aging. Now, how, did that didn't, how does that not win? Anyway, they, they're out. They were eliminated. I have to call it an upset. They had an upset elimination in the first round. But not to be outdone, uh, Dr. Martin and his team have published a paper in Nature, which is really interesting. It's called Single Cell Omics. And it's looking at people who have congenital heart disease, and then they look at all the different pathways in those singles, uh, single cells, and have shown it really interesting that 
There's some evidence of abnormal pathways, including immune dysfunction in, in individual cells from congenital heart. So it's not just the congenital heart that's a problem. There seems to be other, uh, other additional problems in the cells, which accounts for why people with uh, congenital heart disease sometimes have problems we don't understand are connected to the heart disease. This is really insightful. They, they beat uh, Miami, I think, as they should have. And now, unfortunately, we're up against the University of Michigan, my old alma mater, so we have to beat them. So how you do that is voting uh, continuously for five days. You can vote once a day from your computer, phone, or any other device. Uh, for your vote to count, you have to pick one of the two pairs in, for all the pairs. You can't just vote for one. You have to vote for all of them. Uh, and the highest voters, the ones that get the most votes, uh, moves on. So in the words of uh, Chicago Mayor, uh, Mayor Daley, vote now and vote often. <laughs> And if you have any dead relatives, have them vote too. Uh, so here's the, uh, you'll, you'll see uh, listed the URL, so go on that. And you got to vote for all of them, but remember, be sure to vote for Baylor. P please. I mean, if these guys don't win it for that, I don't know. I think the guys with you know, gerontology should have gotten it. And not to be outdone, as you probably know, when you go to your U.S. post office and buy a stamp, of course you're being <laughs> ripped off by the cost of the stamp, but forget that. Uh, there's often uh, people in history or paintings. Well, they're now doing scientific images. And two of our scientists have images that are become, going to become stamps. One, and they're beautiful images, one is an oak leaf surface uh, that looks like, who knew, that it looks like it's a living thing. It looks like that oak leaf would just grab you, but anyway, that's the oak leaf surface. And a mouse brain. And this is uh, credit to our Jason Kirk and our, our uh, College of Medicine's Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy course. So uh, go buy some stamps. I'm going to buy, I'm going to use nothing but those stamps as soon as they're available. All right, and I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. I'm going to start off with shout outs that, of course, my, my wife, my mother, my sister, all the professional women in my life would want me to say. This past week was International Women's Day. Uh, International Women's Day is intended to ce celebrate the achievements of women, raise awareness about discrimination, and take action to drive gender parity. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, many of you, all of us in the medical profession know this, many of you may not, but um, over 50% of the medical school applicants are women. It is becoming a, a field with more and more women than men. Uh, so, and we welcome women to the field of medicine. God knows we need them. Uh, also, this is uh, Women's History Month, which highlights the contributions of women uh, to events in history and contemporary society. So uh, that's exciting. Uh, also, I wanted to do a giant shout out for the First Responders Day at the Rodeo. So the Rodeo is ongoing, big event in Houston. Uh, and the uh, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Sponsorship uh, held, a, held uh, a night that was called First Responders Night. We had 10 Baylor residents who were part of the special evening honoring all first responders are so important to our community. And then finally, I want to say thank you. A lot, of, a lot of you have sent me personal gifts, and I really appreciate it. Uh, but th some of them are really kind of amazing. So one of them I got this week is a wood carving from Earl Fogler, who retired in 2020 after serving many years as the lab manager for our orthotics and prosthetics program. He's in Colorado now, and he's a woodworker. And he sent me this beautiful block that allows me to sit there when I'm depressed and spin this around. Uh, it's Purple Heart on the bottom and Box Elder on the top, but it has everything to do with our videos. It's, it's Dimmick County, the Havelinas, bats and pangolins, of course, back, get your vaccine, and Miss Lily. So thank you, Earl. Really appreciate that. And then I also want to do a giant shout out to uh, one of our pediatric colleagues, uh, George Fedone, who practices in Lufkin. He uh, is a great painter. I mean, he's become a great painter. I, I, I need to buy some of his paintings. He's got beautiful paintings. He, t he painted a picture of uh, Lily before and now uh, her niece, Lucy, who just passed away. Uh, so that's a, it, beautiful paintings. I really appreciate it, George. And, and by the way, he does beautiful paintings of people. Dogs are not his specialty, but these are beautiful. So thank you, George. Anyway, I want everybody to have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.